Right, yeah. So I'm Alexander. I'm a partner and a principal consultant for AI and data science for industry clients. Uh, so uh, apart from being quite active in the, in the Python community, um, I'm also, uh, uh, yeah, eventually I work as well. So And I like to talk and train. So this is the company, Königsweg. Uh, this is what we're doing. So we consult and uh, enable clients for data science project. And just a few teasers, because we don't have so much time, EuroPython calls. EuroPython Basel, EuroSciPy, PyData Frankfurt with Oliver Grisel and Sylvain, if you're in the area. And of course, this, but you will see more about this tomorrow. So I don't want to waste too much time on it here. Uh, so, okay. When did the original idea for this talk start? Actually, it started at PyData London in 2017 when Gene Kogan was giving a keynote. Who was there? Maybe? Okay, so cool. So he was giving a great keynote. It was called Picasso's Terminal. And he was he's an AI artist. And I thought, okay, this is like super interesting. Of course, I'm always like drawn to creative things because a few of you know my first career was actually in the music industry in the 90s with techno and house labels. And so um, yeah. So um <laughs> so I thought, okay, let's try this. Let's try uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, so let's try, you know style transfer. Nobody, yes, okay, yes. okay, style transfer, the basic idea is you take a Van Gogh picture, apply it to a painting, you apply it to a picture and you have the painting in a Van Gogh style. So this is the idea of thing. I said, okay, let's try this. And I, uh, as a kid, I like these French comics. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually French comics, it's Laurent and, um, no, it's Valérien and Laurelin in French. Uh, I don't know what's the Dutch title in Germany. It's uh, Valérien and Véronique. So you have these, and there was also a film two years ago. So I thought, okay, let's try this on a modern DC comic like The Flash, which I think now is not but my cup of tea from the style. So I uh, just tried style transfer. This is my very first style transfer, actually. Okay, there's no operation. No, don't stop. Okay, so take this part of the picture here. <laughs> this does not belong to the presentation. <laughs> so we take a part of this picture, learn style, apply it to this other picture of Flash and Kid Flash. And wow. Okay, can we get rid of it? From okay, From somewhere. No power input. No. 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 It's not a touch screen. Okay. There's no well, 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 um, well. <laughs> okay, so I just continued talking. <laughs> yeah, maybe we just turn it off and on again. So, but I just continued talking well, a bit. So, okay, so you can imagine I, I oh, very good. Yeah, there you, okay. go. you can imagine I was like super flat. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, here, yes, I uh, think, yeah. Okay. Is this going on? Going on? <coughs> oh, this takes some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. So you can imagine, this doing this for the very first time, I thought, okay, Deep learning will solve everything. I mean, this is just like amazing. I mean, it was just like uh, yeah, without doing something. So I did stuff like that. I took a picture. So this is just like a, 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 a picture. This is the picture. This is an excerpt. And I just learned some styles here. You see, like, this is like, okay. And I said, wow, and who, and cool. And you're like, you can really play around, like, also like rearranging the comics here, like, just not taking one page, but making more like a collage. They're just like playing around. So this is what I. Also talk about other presentations on, and this, this, this works always. And you can put another comic here, the thing, or a Mobius comic, that's the Incal for style transfer. But I also like to point out, because if you read blog posts and everything, you very often see, oh, it's always like these great deep learning use cases. And I like to point out, no, it's not always working. For example, if you see a picture here um, with a lot of backlight, you see the, the, the sun actually is always like a hole, so it's not really being picked up, it's not understood. And I, my, my thesis is there are no backlight pictures, so the, the styles are trained against the Coco pictures, and I think nobody puts backlight pictures in a data set. 
so so it's about bias maybe but maybe another reason but okay so the the, the, the journey uh, so i got this vision it's like hey let's do this uh, what about I was super excited I had a lot of fun so i felt like this like hey let's do this um and I thought about, what about this? Uh, so who knows this? One, two, okay, three Germans in the room. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is, uh, it's called the Drei Fragezeichen, the three investigators. It's a very, it's like a, a, American juvenile detectives, detective stories. And uh, they started in the 1960s for, in the US. It's, but there's only one spot in the world where it's popular is Germany. It's going there for since, the 70s. So I really grew up with the, the, the cassettes, so there's books and there's Hörspiele, like tape, like radio dramas. And it's, it's like they, they say like Drei Fragezeichen is like 70% of the Hörspiel market in, in Germany. Uh, so I thought, okay, this might be suitable, have, there's a lot of contents, so let's try this for deep learning and, and also like to see whether the data is sufficient and also like try to push, to look into the different aspects as a fun project, to learn from this, to apply it maybe to other business use cases, to have a better understanding of this. So it's not really about recreating this product, maybe. Um, so, okay, so if you don't know about Hörspiel, it's the best translation I could come up with, is tape radio dramas. Actually, it goes back to the 1920s. Um, it's like pre-internet, pre-television. So people were listening at the radio and they were like, you have like these um, movies without the pictures, and we probably heard about War of the Worlds. Uh, so Orson Welles, the young genius Orson Welles, was also um, in in there, and uh, he put the first fake documentary, basically, or a report there as a as a radio drama. So people listening to a radio drama, sorry, and he was the radio drama was made like, oh, the Americas is invaded by aliens, and people believed it because this was a very new format. So that's the thing. So. Um, this has established and stayed in Germany for quite some time, so this is how it sounds like. Here, Kollegen, lest selber. Ihr würdet es mir nicht glauben, wenn ich es euch vorlese. Ihr würdet glauben, ich spinne. Wie kann eine 3000 Jahre alte Mumie flüstern? So I say the whispering mummy. So, of course, what do we, which ingredients do we actually need uh, to recreate this? So we need a story and a plot, we need dialogues, we need a cover picture, and we need spoken word, because it's spoken word so um and so yeah so and today i'm going to talk about the speech part so uh so which resources are required as in deep learning like um, cost time money uh which other problems look for which other problems could we solve for example in style transfer i just found coincidentally style transfer can also be applied to um like a noisy document and to recreate it in a way it's very readable again, for example. So, and now I settled for always like for the, for the same process here. So the first step is almost like the data acquisition, data cleansing, research a paper in the network, make it work, prove it's actually working, and, um, and then adapt the solution to the use case and maximize the quality. And always like changing one a variable at a time because this is the best way, because this is my, my, my best advice is only change one variable at a time, because if you change two and it's not, we're no longer working, you just have more work. So the story so far, if you're interested in learning more about the other aspects, there's some videos from PyData Berlin last year, and EuroPython, and PyParis, and uh, Florence, no, it's not up yet, uh, so, and um, to, to see the other aspects. So. What I usually do before we start with the thing is something to put a local thing here. So I, last week I was in Florence, the Avengers movie just had have been released. So I created this picture with uh, style transfer with uh, the Piazza della Signora, uh, Signorina, uh, or Signorina, I never remembered. Okay, and of course I want to do this the same for here. So if you don't know, um, if you go to Google Maps, you can also explore the, the canals here. And if you look back, you will always see the Google Maps team having like a joyride. So <laughs> through all the canals. So and here we so now here, here we are. This is now booking.com, yeah? And then you can reply style here, but you can also, for example, start doing a collage here. It's like, so if I take this picture, <laughs> I put Vincent, Stoop Waffles, and Spider-Man, and I just use my built-in preview program here in the Mac, and copy-paste everything together, no Photoshopping involved, put some bubbles here, 
So here we see this, and you can with style transfer you easily can create like a comic style of this. <laughs> yeah. So or take another thing. So, so this was like my local contribute. Now let's go to the audio part. So the task is actually to fabricate spoken language. And the second part would be like make it sound like a known character and of course create sounds and noises. And we're going to focus on the first part. Um, natural text to speech, well, there's like uh, multiple uh, approaches. So one approach was like to concatenate sounds and apply them. This is like maybe built in computers. Um, there's WaveNet around, there's different approaches. And um, at, at first I want to give you a little bit an introduction uh, on, on the sound space here. Uh, so there's wave waveforms. This is like, I think, the most common representation of audio here. Uh, you see this waveform. Welcome to PyData Amsterdam 2018. Uh, did you have coffee? Yes. Did you enjoy the view? Yes. Great. Yeah. Here you basically see where it's false noise, and I took this from the video. But for example, if you take just like a single uh, sound, uh, or a single frequency, it looks like this. So this is the other frequency, like there's nothing going on. And to get a little bit further, um, if there's a thing called spectrograms, what's a spectrogram? Actually, a spectrogram of our wave or single frequency looks like this. You only see like one line here, so it's not super exciting. But for example, if we again listen to Vincent. Welcome to PyData Amsterdam 2018. Uh, did you have coffee? Yeah, you see? Did you enjoy the view? There's a pattern here. Maybe Great. I hope you can see it from the back because it's a little uh, very light here. So you see there's like different patterns going on. And how actually are, so spectrograms I think are easy to understand without knowing too much about it. You see, okay, there's noises and workers, but I want to explain a little bit crash course how they actually are created. So a spectrogram, we take a window from here, from our sound, uh, basically um, apply um, a fast Fourier transform uh, here. Um, basically then we look at the frequencies here and the energy, so we see in these frequency bands, we see more, it's more, less, more or less louder and basically represented by different colors. So if something is like very loud, has a lot of energy, it's like black, and if it's like less, then it's a lighter color. And this is basically how this spectrogram is made and to be read. So, so if you compare like these two spectrograms, one Vincent speaking, the other with one frequency, it looks like this. Um, and if you look here in spectrograms, um, you can also see, for example, is like different words: Bali, Bal, Bar, Bo, and Bai. And you see they are very similar, but there are some differences. And so spectrograms are a very good representation on basically representing the overtones. Because I'm not speaking at just one frequency. When I speak to you, there's a multiple frequencies involved, and you can visualize them with um, spectrograms. So we see patterns in the spectrograms, and we basically get an idea what's going on there. So, yeah. And there's also male spectrograms, um, which we're actually using in the network in a bit. So this is where I'm heading. So male spectrogram of a single frequency looks like this. And basically, at the first look, they look very similar. So what's a male spectrogram? Actually, a male spectrogram, the idea is our ear filters some frequencies already. And the male spectrogram is basically doing the same. So the spectrogram is basically just, OK, we have input data. and we represent in the spectrogram, and with the male spectrogram, we basically, it's like simulation of the ear maybe, so something like that. So we apply different filters on the um, um, like frequency band, so we filter more in the lower levels and filter less in the higher tones. So, and this is about basically, uh, um, yeah, what the similar thing the ear does already as well for us. So, um, yeah, these are like the overtones now, and I guess you know this. Welcome to PyData Amsterdam 2018. Uh, did you have coffee? Yes. Did you enjoy the view? Yes. Great. So basically here you see like, uh, this is like great. I mean, it's just great. This looks like this. And, or if you look at the spectrogram with a, many, um, a lot of noises, for example, here you have a, a lot of noise around, but if you split the spectrogram, you can see like there's bird calls on a certain frequency and with a certain set, so you can use this for to identify audio. 
Um, and there's also like artists like um, FX Twin. They, they put like hidden messages uh, into. So this is uh, this formula or uh, from FX Twin. So they from the music titles there's a spectrogram and they hide a picture in there. Like you can even have cat pictures in the spectrograms. Uh, what? what crazy, isn't it? What? Got to do this immediately. Well, the best talk ever. I learned how to, to cap pictures into music. Yeah. Okay. So, what's Tachodron 2 then? So, actually, the first, if you first, as I first heard about Tachodron, I said, okay, this is like a really crazy idea. We have like a network, but the thing is, it learns on the male spectrograms, which is like, okay, do we actually learn from pictures? We did not, but I'll explain it a bit later. So, the thing is, you just put um, text and the audio into this network to have the network learn how to speak. Yeah? So say, okay, you can put some text in there and get like a voice out of it. Here's a um, build, this is the Tacotron original, not the two, to give you a little bit more impression. So what is it? So actually like the basic ideas you have uh, here in the Tacotron uh, original, we have like a linear scale spectrogram. And the idea is basically we get um, all the, the characters in, and we have an R and N, and basically we just align the, uh, the, the characters to the picture. That's the basic, the very basic idea, very oversimplified idea of this network. Um, and there's also like, um, if you want to have a closer look here, it's uh, yeah, that's a little bit more on this. So and the changes uh, with made with Tacotron 2 here is. Uh, to use LSTMs, also like more convolutions, um, and um, to use the MEL spectrograms here. So, and basically the most important part to get here is, so actually the convolution is deciding on which parts to focus on the MEL spectrogram and to align it to the characters, because still, just putting some text and uh, audio material into a network and to produce results, like my intuition, this, this can never work, this is like, too crazy. So, okay, so um, here. So, again, uh, a little bit closer. So, if I put like text here to, um, to the to the mouse spectrum. Welcome to Pioneer Amsterdam 2018. Uh, did you have coffee? It's not super linear. Did you enjoy the view? Well, yes. right. I mean, it's not like text letter to spectrum. There's pauses, there's like audience, and basically we only have Vincent, but we know there's some audio interaction going on. So, it's not like we can not linearly. Um, basically combine letter to speech here. So that's why I think it's a quite interesting concept. Um, okay, now a little bit about PyTorch, uh, which I used to implement, or like for, for the training. Um, the great things with PyTorch are, for me, it's PyTorch uses conventional programming uh, practices. So PyTorch is basically very object oriented. That's I think that's why it makes it so easy to use. If you're a programmer, it's Py, you can read PyTorch. It's really easy to debug, uh, simple and transparent, and it's also like simple to debug because you can even go use like a, an IDE like PyCharm, the, the debugger, and really see what are the, the outcomes uh, in, in, in while you train the network and to stop and see maybe what, what's going wrong, maybe if their dimensions don't do not fit and um, uh, something like that. Um, and the other thing is, um, it's super simple to write code, which can run on the CPU, maybe for prototyping or just like to get the first steps, but also to move the whole the thing to the CPU. And also like PyTorch, although it feels like very new, the Torch project is it's pretty old. It just was Lua, and uh, now it's available for us. So um, how does PyTorch look like? This is a like a custom L LSTM example here. You, so you see, we just create a class. Have an init function here. Uh, the forward we, we define how we want to have the forward function, and that's it. And basically here we have a built-in LSTM. We can just put in some parameters, and we don't really have to code a lot to create like complex networks like this. Because remember, like um, uh, if I wanted to put the code, for example, for Tacotron 2 here, I made maybe like five, six, seven pages. Because you see, it's like very complex network, um, but. Still, it's very simple to build with PyTorch. For example, this is how I can um, define my encoder, a decoder. I just say, okay, this is a decoder. This is a, a class I take off the shelf, or uh, I've maybe modified this to my needs, and I just pass in uh, some um, parameters, and I use one of the optimizers. Uh, for example, here, I just use an atom, 
and, um, and cross entropy off as a criterion, and it's all built in. So basically, it's just really like plug and play. And if you are good uh, in Python programming or if you have a decent knowledge, it's very, it's actually very simple. It's like a dream come true. So, and this is like how the training looks like, for example. So it's just like define a training function. For example, here is an example. So if CUDA, so somewhere else here, uh, there's a variable set. If a GPU is available, uh, I move stuff to uh, the, the GPU, and otherwise it just stays on the CPU. And of course, usually I like to use my GPU. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's very easy to get started in PyTorch. Uh, I think the best resource is actually the PyTorch project website. There are great tutorials. There's a great and very responsive community there. Uh, uh, the documentation is well written. It's constantly updated. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really easy to get started. So if you're, for example, interested, hey, I really like the style transfer, there's a great blog post, you can get you going with style transfer there. Um, what you should know up front is, um, and I think there's very often a big gap, because usually I use, I rant a lot about deep learning and Jupyter Notebooks, because this is the worst code you see online, is deep learning Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Because there's a lot, it works in the notebook, but it's not product, you cannot really move the code, you cannot reuse it, it's basically just in the space of this one notebook, it's fine, but it's sometimes even hard to read if you have variables used in a function somewhere at the end of the notebook and they're defined up for it. So there's no real programmatic structure in these notebooks you very often see online. And so I think you need to get a better grasp on how Python object-oriented programming works and how to structure, a, 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 I would say, a larger, like not a super big one, but not a trivial um, set of modules, and how to interact with them. Because usually the, the best part is to interact with the shell and put some parameters here and call find well. So um, this is how I started to work. <laughs> so I was uh, there's like these eGPUs you can use uh, now Thunderbolt free. Uh, you, you have like high speed. You can have like its external graphic card. So this is was this was the basic idea. So but the thing is, it's not plug and play. Uh, especially uh, uh, I would not recommend it if you have a Mac uh, because the NVIDIA drivers are currently not updated. So I'm stuck with an old operating system here, uh, which is really bad. Um, so uh, I, my recommendation is uh, if you want to use a G CPU and have like a lab or this, just use a, get a Linux box, not a Mac. So don't, don't buy a Mac for this. Um, get a Linux box, you can put one or multiple GPUs in there. Uh, you can uh, also, um, of course, rent all this in the cloud. Or what I have for longer, long running project, thank you. For longer running projects, I have, uh, uh, there's a, a server at Hetzner, it costs like a hundred bucks. So a month, and so then I can have something run with one GTX 1080 uh, there. Okay, then, uh, so you remember this. Um, since I ranted a lot about coding, I have to give also like a good credit to the NVIDIA, some NVIDIA engineers and because they created a really nice piece of software and put it online for this network. So uh, I can really recommend go there, look what they did, how they arranged it. it it's a beautiful piece. Uh, so it was really easy to use, and basically, yeah, I was I was very building and on the shoulders of giants, as we saw here. So okay, then for speech synthesis, um, I was lucky to find an English data set with 24 hours of uh, audio recorded by one person, and uh, put it into uh, uh, the network. Uh, it has clips from one to ten seconds, so you always have like a clip, a file, and what the text is being sp spoken. It's like 24 hours of text, and it's in a public domain, uh, and it's also like hand handwritten. <laughs> so, yeah. So training the network, we put audio snippets and the text for these audio snippets in the network, and that's let's do this. So the network is always reading this text here. Like after ten hours, it sounds like this. <laughs> Everything's fine with your ears. But after 14 hours, something happened here. I call it, yeah, it woke up. And after nine days, once upon a time, there was a little mermaid named Siren. 
who lived with her stepmother under the sea. She didn't get to go out of the sea like any other. I mean, this is not a replacement for Alexa, but given the resources I needed for this, <laughs> with the right data, um, wow. And so I was, I was quite thinking. So actually, to recreate, it can also do something like this. Welcome to Pi Data Amsterdam 2019. Did you have coffee? Did you enjoy the view? Great. But actually, Pi Data, it said Pi Data. It was not, I mean, it's, it's, it was quite amazing what it picks up. So, of course, let's do this in German. Um, um, so what I require is audio snippets and in German, and I was looking and there was no data set available. So I said, okay, let's do this. Oh, we can do this. There's audio snippets. We can use audiobooks, newspapers, and the requirements is just like, I need humans to prepare the data set. So I reached out to my business partner, Zia, and said, Zia, oh, can you have like three people? I need some people like doing these audio clips. And Zia said, Alex, I really love your talks, but no. Um, okay, so I had to come, but sometimes it's good. Limited resources, remember this, limited resources are good. Chicago House came out of nothing. Jungle Music came out of an eco economic crisis in the UK at the time, the whole thing. So limited resources are good because they make you think. So, uh, so I tried, okay, how can, is there a way I can see me automated? So I was actually, I found a, a newspaper. The newspaper, the good thing is, they just, with a limited set of uh, speakers, they read uh, the, the newspaper without audio clips, without music, with all, all this. So I used the transcription service to get the word index to see me automatically create audio snippets. Okay, I have to speed up. Maybe I need a little bit more time. So, yeah, I would love to give you yeah. more time. Uh, Okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Okay. So the transcription. So my assumption was like the transcription is really good. So I'm speeding up here a bit. Transcription is really good because we hear all about these like oh great conference, great announcement. But it's all for English because actually for German there was only Google available and with AI. And I used the Google service and it was not available on the other services. What I expected. Also I expected a, a good quality. It's just like it's recorded audio by professional speakers. So I, re I think the transcription was soft, but actually the quality wasn't really good. So I got this data set, uh, so I, I have subscriptions, so I scraped the audio, um, and um, yeah, and I just have clean reading. So I even like the newspaper gave me some API access, but it was not really helpful because it was basically only the titles and when it was released, so it was not, not so much to do. So I scraped it with Selenium, and I can really recommend Selenium here, not using Scrapey or Beautiful. Selenium, you see directly what you do in the browser, so it's really fast to scrape a specific website if you don't have to scale. Um, okay, um, so I put the data uh, into WAF, and, and there's a nice uh, library called Audio Talk, which uh, I can use for audio tokenizing, and I used um, then these snippets I put into to the Google Cloud to get them the transcribed, to get the time index. Uh, I also tried some uh, Python libraries and other things, and the transcription quality was beyond being worth to mention. It was really bad. Uh, so, and of course, oh, and of course, the text was cleaned up, numbers, and yeah, abbreviations were put into real language. Um, so, and I built an old module to glue everything together again. So, with Audio Talk, I think this is really easy to get. With Audio Talk, you can say, okay, um, the, if the energy, if there's pauses, you can just like give some parameters and Audio Talk will create snippets from audio. It's a really cool library. It's very nice to interact here. You see, for example, this is all I have to put in. If I say, okay, like have like energy 55, like energy is like how loud something is, um, and maximum 12 second snippets I can create it with a symbol line like this. Okay, so if I feed this to the Google transcription service, you get a JSON. Here you see a JSON, and you see a word, and the time index. And this is a uh, low, really low quality. So this is just like this is not like I didn't really have search for something uh, specific. So this was like the average here. You see, every, all the words in red are false or wrong. So we have extra words, we have wrong words, words missing. I was I was I was expecting like better quality actually. So Deutschland darf kein. Yeah, we can skip that. Um, <laughs> so okay. So um, I adapted the same format for LJ speech to make it simple, so I could just just could plug it plug and play into uh, my transcripts. So okay, 
So um, I have all this and let's let's try this. Um, Deutschland darf kein Talent vergeuden, oh, yeah. so heißt es immer wieder. Wo aber I mentioned this is an original recording, so actually I made it the network a little bit simpler by feeding the text it actually trained. So this was a little trick of the trade here, just like to get a little better impression. After 48 hours, it sounded like this. Yeah, it's funny, it sounds, it also sounds like scary human, like ghosts or stuff, but yeah, but after... 96 hours, if you know about this a little bit, like you have these two input and output spectrograms and if you compare them, you see, usually if you, if you expect a straight line here, if they align well, you see they don't really align well, so no surprise. It says some words, but not the text. Okay, what had ha what's had ha what has happened actually? So actually, um, my speaker theorization didn't work well, so I had too many speakers in the data set and actually especially I had some female voices in there so and female voices are at a higher pitch so there's a big gap like dark speaking men because you read a serious newspaper article and and other pitches uh, in female speakers so actually I removed the I, I just said okay let's settle I tried to find one to focus on one male speaker as good as I could um, there's some different libraries for that I don't didn't really have a strong preference here uh, so you can all do this and then uh, we can come up with something like this Deutschland darf kein Talent vergeuden, you know so heißt es immer wieder. Uh, Wo aber bleiben in unseren Schulen die Angebote für oh, die besonders? I was playing both, sorry. Let me, let me just go back, sorry. Okay, so you know the German text already after 24 hours. Deutschland darf in keinem Talent vergeuden, so heißt es, es ist es ist übel, so heißt es, After five days, Deutschland darf kein Talent vergeuden. Vargas des Mangel wieder am Lolo der Baden in unseren Schulen die Angebote für die besonderen Sandtierten erlangen. But after ten days, Deutschland darf kein Talent vergeuden. Verheißt es immer wieder. Wir bleiben in unseren Schulen die Angebote für die besonders Talentierten. So given, it was just like automatic. There's, there's still a lot of optimization potential even in the, in, the, in, the, in the ground, in the data used for this. I think this was also like not too bad for the resources thrown at it. So, so this is, I think this is why we should look at deep learning in a, in a different way maybe. Uh, I see deep learning is more like, it's like, it's like, it's like iron and you, you, you forge it like a blacksmith and you can get it like a tool in a certain direction and maybe like 95% uh, are just like For, as a good tool. So and I think I was pretty impressed and I'm uh, trying to remember this. Maybe there's some totally different use cases than for speech because I don't really want to get into a competition with Siri or uh, Alexa or whatever. Yeah. So um, first exploration here is throw more data in the space because there's audiobooks uh, and of the same speakers to see, okay, will the network improve and even pick up more the characteristics because what's also quite obvious The, the speaker characteristics are picked up as well. It's very sensitive to, if to um, a heterogeneous data set. Um, so networks, the learning lesson here, networks, they don't generalize well very often. So uh, some, some, just some noisy data can basically make the network collapse. Um, and also look into new tech, which is coming out in the space, which is like uh, every day. So if you want to get a better understanding of the whole thing, um, if you don't know, there's still pop, go there. It's a great explanation for many things in the AI space. Um, if you want to look in the audio, um, there's a great uh, musicretrieval.com with many techniques and audio processing and Python uh, with Jupyter Notebooks examples is a great place. And, uh, and if you pl want to play around with cutting edge uh, na and natural language, uh, natural uh, neural networks, there's also a great site with papers with code, which I can recommend to get you started to just like try. And I really want to, uh, um, this is my advice, like, go there, play with AI. Um, uh, it's not probably the best solution yet for uh, solving business and real life problems, but I think it's a really great space to explore and I'm sure there will be some really good use cases in the future solving problems. Thank you.